out of sight, out of mind, and a lot of times uh, maintenance does work on them, but then they kind of forget that they've made some changes, and these things kind of linger and linger and linger. So we kind of want to talk a little bit about air handling units and how you can use data loggers and to determine their efficiency and how to uh, modify and, and take care of the, your air handlers. Um, and AHU efficiency, what we call has a trickle-down effect on the operation of your boilers and your chillers. So what happens is if your AHU is not working right, all the supporting equipment doesn't work, it has to work harder to make up the uh, inefficiencies in the AHU. Um, they also can lead to higher energy demand charges because it forces not only the fans in your AHU, but the chiller demand charges or demand costs go up as well. Some factors to consider. First, you need to determine what type of AHU you have or ventilation system you have. Do you have constant volume system, variable air volume, dual duct, single duct? There's many types out there, many different variations. Then on top of that, is it, does it, do you have economizers? And are they functioning properly? Do they have enthalpy control? And is that working correctly based on humidity and the temperature of the outside air? And um, are your dampers operating properly? Boy, simple thing to ask about dampers, but very often we find dampers not functioning properly. They are the binding. People have put tubifores or uh, different types of things to try and correct the problem and then forget about it. And for years later, then you come back and you find these things still operating in, or inoperating uh, the way they are. So. And also to look at temperature set points. Are they correct? Um, sometimes people make adjustments because somebody's cold or somebody's hot, and then they forget about it later on, and it stays that way for a long time. And some even more basic things. Are your fans and belts uh, well-maintained? And Do you have premium efficient motors? Sometimes the simple things are overlooked. Some other factors to consider are the filters. Um, we find a lot of times the filters are neglected and they're changed either on a time basis. Sometimes if you change it on a time basis, that's good, but what happens if there's construction in the area and the filters get contaminated and clogged? So then you've got the system trying to make up for all that clogged filter. It then doesn't function as well. So maybe a better way of doing it is to look at the pressure drop across those filters and monitor that and make sure that's okay. Um, water coils, are they good? Clean coils, have they been cleaned, power cleaned? Have you taken care of those coils so you get a good thermal transfer? Uh, that is neglected quite a bit as well. And what was the last time you've calibrated your system? Um, a lot of times airflow stations, temperatures, outside air, return air, uh, your static pressure sensors, humidity, and your filters, uh, your, your differential pressure indicators for your filters. If these things aren't calibrated on a regular basis, then the system gets out of calibration and should be recommissioned. So in a air handling unit such as we're talking about, Here's the three steps again, how we want to do it. We want to look at uh, measurement. We can measure the AHU with data loggers, determine how much energy it's using prior to making modifications. From that data information, we can determine um, some of the steps we need to do to correct these issues, make the modification, and then afterwards, let's verify and make sure that the modifications were effective. Measure. Well, let's determine how much energy the AHU is using and establish a base case for using data loggers to measure the following. In the utility world and rebate world, we have to determine what our base case is. So we call this the base case. And that's looking at your supply and return fan, motor KW and KWH. How much energy does it take to move this air? The airflow in CFM, so how many cubic feet per minute are we moving? The air temperature. Um, supply, return, outside air temperature, your mixing box temperature, what's the static pressure in the system, and um, your water temperature, whether it's in the chill or hot, depending on what mode of the year you're in, summer or winter mode. Okay, after we've measured it, now it's time to modify it. 
But prior to modifying, you should check to your with your utility. If you've identified pieces in this equipment that need to be fixed, there may be utility rebates that you can take advantage of to lower your overall cost. Uh, these rebates are available definitely in the Northeast and out in California, but it's uh, pretty much running across the country in many areas where these rebates can help you uh, lower your overall cost of modification. So once we've found what we need to do, there's some things that you could look at. Um, possible energy conservation measures that we could uh, use to lower your demand. One of them is uh, installing variable frequency drives on air handling systems, supply and return, fans and motors. And typically these are in VAV type systems. You can also do it in constant volume, but you've got to be careful on, on what you're doing there. But um, definitely in AHUs, um, in a VAV system, this is a very good um, modification that can be done. Um, one that's uh, very simple and, and should always be done is uh, new and premium efficient motors. Um, it's amazing still how many motors are out there. And if they've been rewound, if your motors have been rewound, they're at least one to three to five percent less efficient than the nameplate. So always figure that into uh, your efficiency calculations when you're taking a look at uh, motors. Um, Replacing filters were necessary. Um, we show this as a one to two year payback. They're very easy to, re uh, to replace. If it's a hospital, they're pretty costly, but even at that, typically the uh, delta P or the pressure across those filters can really cost you a lot of energy. So replacing filters is kind of a no brainer and typically is a low cost um, uh, modification. Uh, retro commission your controls. Uh, that's calibrating your sensors, repairing actuators and dampers, balancing your system. Um, we talk about fire alarm interlocks. We've found many systems that the fire alarms are not interlocked to the system, which is not to code, but we find it. And is your economizer, if you don't have one, think about putting one in. And if you do, is it functioning properly? Um, we truly recommend always to uh, power wash your coils because that cleans them up and makes them very efficient in thermal transfer. After you've modified it, now it's time to verify it. Did the modifications actually work? So first we basically are going to repeat the steps that we did before. Um, we're going to modify, or excuse me, monitor the supply and the return fan, KW, KWH, see what and if any reduction has happened, and we hope there is. Um, the airflow CFM, temperatures, static pressures, and water temperature. And basically taking this information, um, we can then determine is it running more efficient than it was previously. For successful measurement, you really need to develop a data logging plan that outlines project goals and approach. This may include a high-level problem statement, including reporting requirements. What do you really want to achieve, and what format does it need to be in? A list of the parameters that need to be measured. A list of data logging equipment to be used. Um, definitely want to have a list of data logging equipment before you go deploy your logger because once you get there and you don't have all your equipment, it's another trip and it's going to cost you some money. Um, we want to also look at the accuracy and the calibration requirements for all log points. How accurate does it need to be? 